Hello everyone, my name is Karina. I go by Cardsy on social media, and today's video is the first video of the Kyoshi Warrior series, all about the making of my shield. For this project to save money, I decided to not go off and buy large sheets of 5mm foam and instead use the sheets of 10mm foam that I already had at home. I made a circle to the dimensions of how big I wanted the shield to be, keeping in mind that this shield was going to be domed later on. I went ahead and started cutting out the square for the center of the shield. Then with a tracing wheel, I've made holes all around the circle, and these indentations will help me know how far to go in to cut the foam. And then with a heat gun, I went over top the line to expand it and make it more obvious when I'm cutting. Carefully, I used my tools to cut around the circle up to the point that I had marked. My goal was to create a circumference around the shield that was five millimeters below the rest of the shield. This part of the process was very labor intensive for me and my arms ended up hurting afterwards. And after that, it was time to head outside to a well-ventilated area. Okay, I'm outside. I am wearing a long sleeve turtleneck because I want to make sure the foam does not irritate my skin. It is extremely hot. I am wearing a N95 mask because I don't want to breathe in these particles. And yes, I'm about to dremel the shield. I laid down the small details that I had cut already onto the shield to get a basic idea of what this was going to look like. Later on, you'll see that I'll change up this design and add a little bit more dimension to the shield. To create the dome effect, I grabbed an exercise ball and reinflated it. And then started plastic wrapping the shield around the exercise ball. When it was stuck on, I grabbed some tape and forced the shield down into the dome shape. <laughs> After this, I shoved it into a car and left it there for a couple hours, making sure it was in the car during midday, which is when the sun was at its peak. The Florida sun knew no mercy and gave me exactly the shape that I wanted. Once I got it out of the car, I went to work getting the shield out of the plastic wrap. And as you can see, the dome shape held. This whole idea to use the exercise ball to make the dome shape came from Lost Wax. So please make sure to check out his channel. I'll have a link for him in the description. And now I repeated the same steps for the other half of the shield. Oh, this is warm.
And this was the two halves of the shield. Here you can see me testing out a little bit of the product that the company Cosbond sent me for this contest. The product I am using is an adhesive product that is sticky on two sides. So you peel away one side, stick it to the foam, and then peel away the other, stick it to the other surface. The tiny square that I did held up well, and so I continued on with my project. To make the squares, I grabbed some 5mm craft foam that I had in my stash, and then I moved one of the sheets to the other side of the shield to make sure that both sides were level. Then I measured and found that approximately one inch by one inch squares would be perfect for the dimensions of the shield. I grabbed one of the craft sheets, laid down my ruler, and started marking at each one inch point. After I marked the squares, I then started cutting them out. With this shield, I took some liberties into the design and decided to spice it up a bit. For this prop, I decided to copy completely how it is in the show since it only makes an appearance in one scene. The reason why I added more dimension to the shield was because the show has more of a simplistic geometry, which would have made the shield look very cartoony if I kept it the way it was in real life. So I decided to build up layers and instead of having a yellow shield, make a gold instead. To layer up the center of the dome, I cut out multiple squares of both the adhesive sheets and EVA craft foam. I then built these up and later on went in to dremel them. For the straps of the shield, I cut holes with a box cutter and then used some leftover material I have for my Violet Evergarden cosplay. I left room in the straps to make sure that when I make my bracer, my bracer will be able to fit underneath the straps. I used multiple sheets in different sizes all around the shield to get it to lay flat. All in all, to make this shield, I used about four sheets of the adhesive material. And then carefully, I stuck both halves together.
Once the centerpiece was stuck on, I grabbed my heat gun and sealed off the film. Going on my fourth sheet of adhesive material, I made a chocolate bar effect. I layered all the squares together and then used scissors to cut them out. Once I had about a million little tiny squares, I peeled off their backs and stuck them one by one all around the shield. I went in with quick seal. I filled up any holes and edges that needed to be smooth. As you can see, that morning I was multitasking. To prime the shield, I'm using Plasti Dip. Online, I was seeing recommendations of warming up Plasti Dip a little bit before using it. Using the pot of hot water, I put the Plasti Dip can into it. I then went outside and gave the shield its first coat of Plasti Dip. Once the top of the shield was dry, I went in and covered the straps with tape so that I could prime the other side. For some reason, those tiny squares were starting to pop out at the edges a little bit, and this is most likely because they're on the most curved surface of the material. So I went in with quick seal all around each individual square to fill in the holes and make them stick. While plastic dipping the shield, I ran into a problem. I was getting an incredible amount of fuzz all around the shield on areas that were completely smooth before. I don't know if it was because I heated up the can or if the white plastic dip has a different formula to the black one that most people use. So I went ahead and sprayed more plastic dip all around the shield and it has covered up majority of the problem I had before. Now there are still some fuzz here and there, but this is the best I can do at the moment. So I've painted the back of the shield brown and now I'm gonna let it dry for the night. And I have done a basic coat of paint all around and I'm gonna go on top of this paint and try to get the layers to get right. For instance, I'm putting a bronze on top of the brown color so that the bronze doesn't look too orange and pinkish because the paint, if it's sitting on top of the white Plasti Dip spray, will look very orange and pinkish. So I am going over everything and going over with a first layer and doing my best to layer up the gold paint around the dome so that I can eliminate as many holes as possible.
Although I was able to get the majority of the bumps out, I'm going around with my tiny crane scissors and I'm just gonna try to cut off all these leftover bumps as much as possible. And hopefully after that, I'm able to go in with more paint to fix the problem. And to finish off the shield, I sprayed it with Mod Podge spray. And this is the finished shield. One of my favorite parts of this shield is that I matched the green squares in the front to my silk swatches, which we'll see in a later video. For some reason, as I was carrying on the shield, it made me feel like Wonder Woman, which is not what I was going for, but still cool. Thank you so much for watching the first episode in the Kyoshi Warrior series. There'll be a lot more videos coming out all about the building of this costume. There's a visitor on my porch.